Okay. So this, uh, so today we're doing uh, section 10.4, and that's going to be the second day. Okay, and it's kind of it's kind of a combination of inverses with radical graphing. So instead of only doing lines, we're going to be graphing the radicals. And then their inverses are kind of interesting. Okay, so that's going to be our plan for today. So a couple things is an inverse. Do you remember from Tuesday or from last Thursday what our main concept for inverses was? Our main concept. What was our main concept for inverses? Math inverse. Yes. So the main concept for inverses that you'll want to remember when you get to Algebra 2, um, your Algebra 2 teachers will be surprised if you know it. Okay, so um, if you know that you're supposed to switch X and Y, they'll be surprised that you know it. So it's not something that they're expecting you to be an expert in. And then in geometry, um... Not too much. Uh, there's a property called the inverse property, but you don't use it very much. So it's a little bit different, but um, it's not so much in geometry. Okay. So inverse to switching X and Y. Okay. And then um, we want to, let me, let me show you an example. We're going to do a graphing. So I'm going to hit graph here. So let's do graphing. Okay. So um, the first one we'll do is we'll do a, uh, we'll do a cube, uh, a cube. Okay, so actually, I'm going to change this so I don't don't write the uh, y equals. I want to write f of x equals. Okay, so we're going to have f of x equals, and it's going to be x minus two to the third power. And let's see what a good one would be here. Let's have it be. I'm trying to think from where it's going to go. Okay, so we're going to do this one, and then we're going to go uh, minus 4. I think this will be a good one. Okay, so um, we have kind of an A, B, C, D thing. Okay, so what we're going to do, A, is we want to find F inverse, B, we're going to graph f of x, c, we're going to graph f inverse of x, and then there's a third line. So we're going to graph the symmetry line. Does anybody remember what the symmetry line's equation was? It's that 45 degree line right down the middle. Anyone remember what that equation was? Or can you flip to yesterday's notes? What was the equation of our light blue line that went down the middle? The middle but slanted. Anyone remember what that line was? Or if you could flip in your notes and see it from the other day. I, I think I remember us writing it in light blue. You know what? I can go back a couple pages. Let's see. No, it's not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. I wonder if it's down or up. Oh, oh, it's this day. Yes, yeah, see, the, draw the y equals, uh, right here, this is from the other day, we'll draw the y equals x symmetry line. So see that light blue one that I was drawing? So let's just look at the day before. So you don't have to draw this right now, but this is looking at our notes from the day before. So this blue line, this y equals x line, 45 degree, or 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, is the symmetry line for all functions and their inverses. Okay. So uh, let me get back to our current page. Let's see. Is that that one? It is. Okay. So graph the symmetry line. And then sometimes they don't tell you what the symmetry line is. 
in algebra two, and then you have to list it. But for now, um, I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay. Okay. So this is our plan. Now we did this before with lines. Okay. So on the old homework, we did it with lines, but this one is with a cube. So this is more advanced. Okay. So you're not expected to be an expert, just introducing something. And then it reminds you how to graph as well. Okay. So first of all, this notation uh, that says find F inverse. So this will be part A. So part A says we need to switch X and Y. But we can't really switch X and Y if there is no Y. So if you remember, we changed F of X to Y equals. What was our next step after changing the F of X to Y equals? Mm -hmm. So after we write f of x as y instead of its more uh, formal name, f of x, we're going to change. Instead of writing the y, we're going to write x. And instead of writing the x, we're going to write y. OK, now um, with my red pen, if you have another color, put a box around the y. So the first step for part A, so I'll kind of write it up here, is write f of x as y instead. And we did this the other day, and all of you saw this, so this is okay. The second step was switch x and y. And then the last step was solve for y and write as f inverse. So that was our plan. So I need to get y by itself. So I'm going to highlight the things I'm going to need to move. I'm going to need to move the negative 2. I'm going to need to move the 3. And I'm going to need to move the negative 4. So how am I going to do that? Uh, any idea which one I should move first? Usually it's the farthest away one from Y. Okay, I agree, we should move the four. I'm gonna unhighlight these. I'm gonna move the four. So to move the four, we're gonna add a four to both sides. And then X plus four, because they're not like terms, is Y minus two cubed. Now I need to get rid of the cube. I need to get rid of the cube. How do you get rid of a cube? We've never done that before. Anyone have an idea? We've never seen that before. We've never seen getting rid of a cube. So what I do in math, if I'm trying to get rid of something, and I don't know how, I do a what if. So I'm going to put a what if on the other side. I'm going to say, I think I've seen something like that, but I don't think it was with a cube. So what if it was a squared? So what if I had x squared equals, well, let's even make it look a little bit more like this. What if you had x minus 2 squared equals, and then let's say we had a number, 36. So this is chapter 9. Anyone remember how we removed the squared? Because I'm thinking that we could do the same thing. I'm just going to erase that to not be a two anymore. Let's have that be a whatever, five. But to get rid of the square. Yeah, I square root it. So to get rid of the square, I square root it. And we usually didn't put the two in the corner. Right? We just drew the regular square root. And then we chopped it off. And then we got absolute value. And then we split it. I'm going to put et cetera. That's what we did in chapter nine. Okay, now in our problem, what I'm trying to get rid of is this cube. 
So if square rooting gets rid of a squared, how do you think you might get rid of a cube root? Oops, shoot, I didn't mean to say it. Never mind. Okay, so the answer is you cube root both sides. Oh, darn. I meant to get rid of a cube, not rid of a cube root. Okay, so when I draw this, okay, put the little three in the corner. The little three in the corner. Now, it turns out that for odds, there's no absolute value. So we're going to put this odd when it's cube and cube. When they cancel, there's no absolute value. When it's even, like a fourth root and a fourth, well, it depends which way it is. But if the fourth root is underneath, the fourth is underneath and they cancel, there is an absolute value, but only for evens. And not always, it's a little confusing. But in Algebra 1, we're not concerned that you know that. Well, uh, mostly if you just don't have the absolute value, that would be more normal. Okay, so let's see. So on this side, you can't do anything. On the left side, you just leave it the cube root of x plus 4. And on this side, the cube and the cube root cancel and just leave you with y minus 2. No absolute value because it's odd. Okay. And then what do you think? How do I get y alone? Oops. How do I get y alone? What should I do to both sides? Anyone have an idea? How can I get the Y alone? Yeah, so we're going to add two to both sides. Now I'm going to put a plus two over here, but the two, that two is outside and that other two, four is inside. So I can't really write it. Like, I can't make that a six. The four is inside the cube root, but the two is outside. So I'm going to have to leave them separate. And then to me, it looks funny. They're on the wrong side. So this is, again, this was called the symmetric property. You'll have to know the symmetric property in geometry just a little bit, but they'll teach it to you. Symmetric is when you switch sides. Okay. And then Y, you now rewrite as F inverse of X. To show you how close school is to being over the seniors, this is their last week, and they're done. And then our grades are due Friday, and that's it. Okay, so that's it right there. And then we have to now graph, graph, graph. Okay, so now our plan is to graph all of these. So I'm going to write down all the things we're going to graph. So that's the just by finding the inverses part A. And then we're going to graph, graph, graph. Okay, so let me um, let me move that down here. So I'm going to write, uh, I like it with y equals. So this is for part B. I'm going to have y equals x minus 2 cubed minus 4. And then part C is I'm going to graph y equals the cube root of x plus 4 plus 2. And then D is I'm going to graph Y equals X. I'm going to show my work here, and then I'm going to graph below. But I just wanted to write them all out. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Any questions? Are you guys doing okay? Is everybody caught up? Because when we start doing the graphing, um, I don't want anyone to get behind.
Okay. 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 So we have our three that we're going to graph. Now we have to decide which one we know how to graph. So in section 10.1, we were graphing ones that look like C. D is a line. So D is the line Y equals 1X plus 0. Or you could think of it as 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, et cetera, 0, 0. So that's not going to be a bad way to graph D. But for C, we have to think, how are we going to graph this? So what we did, I think C was the one that we graphed in section 10.1. Okay, so um, I'm going to put a little note that says from 10.1. So if you haven't done 10.1 yet, you'll want to do 10.1 graphs. 10.1, 10.2, it was that video. But stay, stay with me and at least graph them from here. So cube root of X was our basic. And then um, which way does the plus four and the plus two make it go? So what transformations is the plus four plus two? Okay, so inside left and right. Okay, so the four is gonna be left four. And the outside is going to be up to. Okay, now we made a certain table of values for cube roots. So for cube roots and square roots and evens and odds, remember what we did is we did negative one, zero, one, and then we picked two to the power in the corner. So uh, two times two times two is eight. So we graph, we, we had to substitute in eight and then potentially negative eight. Okay, so what do we do with those numbers? We substitute them in the basic graph, not the original graph. There's two different ways to do it. But this is the way that we're gonna do this one. So it's find the cube root of negative one, find the cube root of zero, find the cube root of one, find the cube root of eight, and find the cube root of negative eight. Okay, so try to work those out. I'll kind of show the work over here. So try to fill in the chart. Okay, so fill in the chart, work those out. Okay, so you guys, I need somebody else to answer, okay? Oh, I just, <laughs> let me twist. Okay. I, have, I have my tablet on my lap, but, oh, okay, go. Okay, so somebody different. Okay, so don't make her do all the work. 
Okay. Oops. <laughs> My presentation screen's going all kooky here. Oh, what did I do? Okay, there we go. We're back. There. Okay, so somebody's different. What is the cube root of negative one? Cube root of negative one. Negative one, I agree. Okay, somebody different? What's the cube root of zero? What times what times what times what gives you zero? What times what times what equals zero? Yep, perfect, zero, I agree. And then what about to get one? What times what times what gives you one? Perfect, good. Okay, how about eight? What times what times what gives you eight? We just have one more person who hasn't answered, I think. Because you guys, we have five of you. So just one more person and then we'll open it back up. Perseus, what do you think? What times what times what gives you eight? Perfect. Okay. Charlize, how about how do you get negative eight? Yep. Negative two. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you guys remember if this was the S or the R graph? Yeah, this one's gonna be an S graph. Okay, so let's graph the C first. Okay, but how are we for space? Okay, I know what B looks like, and B gets really tall. So I need you to find a space on your graph paper, okay, where you can go up and down 10. Okay, so just find a space anywhere on your graph paper. It's going to be a really big graph. The cubes and the cube roots make wide and tall graphs. So um, you want to make sure that you can go up 10 and right 10 and left 10 and down 10. Okay, so your graph paper squares are a little bit different than mine, but you're going to want to make sure that you can make it so you can go up to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to the left. Okay, 10 up, 10 down. So try to figure out where you want to put your graph so that you can do that. Okay, so we're going to graph this one on it. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. And then 8, 2. And negative 8, negative 2. And then, oh, and then that's not the real graph. This is dashed. Because remember, we wanted to move it. So I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna scroll down. Left four, up two. So I need every point of those five points moved left four and up two. I'm gonna still do this in blue. Okay, so left four, up two, left four, up two, left, four, up, two. Wish you guys could see my hand. Okay, something went wrong with that one. Left, four, up, two. Oh, oh this one's wrong. That one's wrong. Okay, so left, one, two, three, four, up, two. Left, one, two, three, four, up, two. Okay, those three look like they're in a row again. Left, one, two, three, four, up, two. 
Okay. And then it's like your, um, it's like a waterfall right here. It goes straight down just for a second and then curves back around. And was that F or F inverse? Uh, that was C. I think that was F inverse. So I'm going to call that F inverse of X. Okay. And then uh, when you're done, put done. So that I know I can move to the next graph. Oh, shoot, you guys are speedy. Good job. Good job. Dang, you guys are fast. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, let's do B next. Okay, let's do B next. Now, B is going to be unfamiliar. I'm going to change colors just so we have a different color. What do you think the basic equation would look like? What do you think? Or what do you think the two and the four do? So give me anything that you think about it. What's the two do? What's the four do? Or uh, what's the equation of my basic graph? So just try to answer one of those questions. What does the two do in B? We're looking at B. What does the four do? Or what is my basic equation so that I could graph it? Anyone have an idea? So for part B, what's the two do? Uh, that's not the right basic equation, but that's a good guess. Okay, let's deal with the numbers first then. I think that'll be easier. So uh, what does the two do? Is that two inside or outside? What do you think? Is that two inside or outside? Okay, it's inside. So we're going to go, um, so inside moves which way? Would that be um, a left to, right to, up to, down to? What do you think? Yes. So this is right two. And then the four would be down four. Okay, now let me show you a way to find the basic equation. So what I sometimes do is lightly cross out in my brain the things I've already done. So I already said that minus two means right two. And I've already said that minus four means down four. So the basic equation is y equals, you could leave the parenthesis if you wanted, and then to the third power. So it's one you don't recognize. Um, I know that one of you put absolute value. That would have to have an absolute value in the problem to have an absolute value. So um, an out, one that would be an absolute value is if it looked like this. That would be an absolute value basic graph. So one thing I uh, learned a couple years ago in teaching Algebra 2 is I realized I could identify the basic graphs, but my students couldn't. And I realized what the problem was. And what the problem was is that 
in my brain, I take off all the extra numbers that I used for the rights and the downs or maybe the vertical stretches or the shifts. And uh, that's how I, um, that's how I figure out what the basic equation is. And um, I had never explained it that way before. So maybe um, this idea is the, uh, you kind of cross out the things that you use. What's left is the basic equation. Okay, so it's y equals x cubed. Now we've never done that before. So if we've never graphed something like that before, we're just gonna make a table of values. And then um, let's just substitute in the normal numbers, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And we'll hope for the best. So that means I'm going to put what? Negative two to the third power, negative one to the third power, zero to the third power, one to the third power, and two to the third power. So remember the third power means that you have three of them and you're multiplying them. So this one would be negative eight. And the negative one would be negative one times negative one times negative one, which is negative one. Uh, zero times zero times zero equals zero. One times one times one is one. And two times two times two is eight. So we're going to graph those and then move it right to down four. So that's our plan. We're going to graph these, and then we're going to go right to down four after that. So let's see. So we have negative two. Okay. Let me zoom out so I can see. So negative two, negative eight, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one. And then right to up eight. This is down to negative eight. Now, cube graphs you'll learn in Algebra 2. They kind of look like two half parabolas. I think of it as a full parabola. So I'll just draw this parabola over here. So I think of it as a full parabola that somebody cut it in the middle with a pair of scissors. And so the left half, usually you'll see me put my two arms up. Okay, so my two arms are up. It's hard to do since I'm sitting down, but basically one side flips over and then the right arm stays up and the left arm flips over. So the red, is a parabola and the green that I wrote is a cube. It's called a cubic. A cubic is y equals x to the third. Now, since you already learned the s's, what it really looks like is an s on its side. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the red graph in, but I'm gonna draw a dashed. Okay, so it kind of looks like this. But I need to move it. So which way did I need to move it? Right to down four. So you're gonna graph those dots, kind of sketch in the shape, and then go right to down four for each point. Right to down four. Right to down four, right two, down four, right two, down four. And then this is the graph. It's like a parabola facing up on one side 
and then a parabola upside down on the other side. In calculus, if you if you take calculus in college, it's called a concave up and concave down. It's like one parabola is facing up and then one parabola is facing down. Now there should be some symmetry if you do it correctly. Okay, let me know um, when you're done with the red graph and then we'll go on to uh, graphing part D. Okay, so when you're done with the red graph, you're gonna let me know. So the second red graph. So you're drawing the basic red graph and then we shifted it. And what we're practicing is we're practicing the shifts, we're practicing the graphing, we're practicing plotting points, we're practicing all of that. You're not gonna have to be an expert at this specific topic in Algebra 2 or before Algebra 2. Um, we'll definitely teach it again to you and not assume that you know it already. Quadratic formula, we teach it again, but we do, um, Um, with quadratic formula, we teach it again, but we do really expect that you know it. And you might need it for algebra too. Okay, so you're putting done when you're red, done with the red one. Okay, I'm just waiting on one more person to be done with the graphing. No hurry. Okay, we got all of you. Okay, so um, wouldn't it be nice if we could do that in the regular school year? I'm like speeding through right next one, next one. And I don't know when everyone's done, so it's kind of nice. Okay, um, I'm gonna circle this one in light blue. Okay, so this one right here, um, there's different ways to graph it. The way I usually graph it is by these matching points. And the y equals x line is saying, excuse me, saying that the x and the y are the same values. So these are the same. Okay, so um, zero, zero. I'm drawing it on the graph now. One, one, two, two. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two, negative three, negative three. It's just that 45 degree line. I just pick all the points that have the same numbers. And then this line right here, that line right here is called y equals x. And then I'm gonna have to go back and label the inverse graph because I didn't label it. So y equals x, which is the symmetry line. This is symmetry for F inverse and F. So F inverse and F always have that symmetry line. So um, what you should do is twist. I can't really twist it. I'm just trying to think of how I can twist it for you. I can't. I can't twist it for you. So basically, twist your head. Okay, so twist your head so that uh, I'll kind of draw a head. So your head's here. Okay, so twist your head here. Okay, so this is like your body. Okay, so twist your head. And do you feel like the red and the blue are kind of equal on different sides. Do you feel like it's symmetric? So you kind of want to twist your paper so that your head is looking at the 45 degree angle. And then the red and the blue should be matching sides. 
it's almost like one side of a kite and the other side of the kite. And then your body here, that symmetry line is right down the middle of the kite. Okay, so you kind of want to look at it from the kite's perspective. And it should be symmetric if you didn't do anything wrong. So if you accidentally move something to the right when you were supposed to move it to the left, then it wouldn't look like the symmetry. Okay. And that's it. We're basically, we're almost out of time. So let me show you one more. We'll just do cubes and cube roots today. So I'm going to show you one more that we're not going to graph, but it's going to, it would graph the same as the above one, similar. So what I want to give you, for example, two is just an equation. So this one is f of x. Okay, and this one is, so I won't have you graph the square root ones. I'll just have you graph the cube root one. So I want to show you two. I think I have time for two. So say you had uh, x plus 4 minus 5, and it said find the inverse. Okay, and then this one, I'm not going to have you graph it. And then example, our last example, which will be fast because we're not going to graph it, is going to be what if you had the cube root of x plus 4 minus 5. So these are going to be our two functions. And it says find the inverse. Okay, so our first step is you change, uh, you change f of x to y. And then remember your next step was switch x and y. So those two steps um, you can do by memorization. You're not thinking too much, except thinking to remember uh, like some directions that somebody told you. Somebody said, change f of x to y, and then exchange y and x. So where you see a y, put an x, and where you see an x, put a y. So at that point, you're thinking in a memorization way, but you're not thinking of what's my attack strategy. Now, at this point, when I box the Y and I'm trying to solve the Y, I'm going to have to start making math decisions. So I look at that and I have to say, well, every problem's different now. So this is going to be different than the next question. I have to get Y alone. So I'm going to have to get rid of the, the positive 4, the negative 5, and the square root. So first, which one should I move? Which one should I move first? Uh-huh, I want to move the negative 5. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And remember, the decision you make is it's the one that's farther away from the Y. Now I have two more things to get rid of. I changed color, so I'm in red now. But um, I have two more things to get rid of. I'm going to have to get rid of the positive 4 and the square root. How do you get rid of a square root? This was a uh, homework on 10.3. How do you get rid of a square root? What's the opposite of square rooting? A uh, right idea, but it's the opposite of square rooting. So what's the opposite of square rooting? So the opposite of square rooting is squaring. So you're going to put a squared in the exponent. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. But you have to put a parenthesis. And then the square and the square root cancel. And I'm not giving you any that give you an absolute value today. So this one also doesn't give you an absolute value. And then um, I'm still trying to get rid of y. So how do I get rid of the positive 4? How do I get rid of the positive 4? Okay, so we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. 
Now, when I subtract four from the left side, there's no four over there. I mean, there's this is like a parenthesis, so uh, it's not a like term. So it's x plus five squared minus four equals y. And then I'll just put an arrow over here. So that's f inverse of x equals x plus five squared minus four. And then let's do the same thing on this one. So you switch x and y, not switch x and y. First, I need to make f of x, y. Switch x and y. Oops, switch x and y. And then I need to get y alone. So how am I going to get y alone? I'm going to add the 5. And this is similar to the other one. x plus 5 equals the cube root of y plus 4. Now I need to get rid of the 4 and the cube root. But the cube root is kind of farther away from the y. So you cube both sides. And then you get x plus 5 cubed equals y plus 4. And then I have to get rid of the 4. Switch sides. I didn't switch sides on the last one because um, I ran out of space. And then I write the notation, f inverse of x equals. And then this one, you could graph both of them. This one's going to graph like this. And then the cube root one's going to graph sideways. So this one you could graph just like example one. But I'm not going to have you graph the squared and the square roots yet because there's something uh, very interesting that happens. So I'll want to show you that another day or maybe save that for Algebra 2. Okay. I'm going to stop recording, but I'm going to still let you ask questions if you have any questions. Okay, so let me stop recording.